We're here at Crankworks Rotorua, and I'm really excited to show you a bike that has not yet been seen in the wild. It is Theo Galli's Sun Kern 29er. Every element of this bike has been designed with ride characteristics and racing in mind. So let's take a closer look. Now, Theo stands at around 172 centimeters tall, and this bike is a medium, which is running a 456 mil reach, which is pretty long. Like a lot of bike brands, their larges are about that sort of length. If you were to go to a large on this bike, it would be a whopping 486 mil. The medium here has chain stays of 440, so about on the money with contemporary bike design. The reason this bike has been in the development prototype stage for around a year is they wanted to fine tune the carbon layup. Now, when you have carbon, you can either make it really stiff or more compliant. And because it's derived from racing, they wanted to get that blend just right. Did a lot of work on the down tube actually. They didn't want to have their riders beaten around on long days, nor did they want it wallowy and soft under power. Everything on this bike is carbon. And I mean everything. The whole chain stays, seat stays, front triangle, and even a lot of the bits that encompass and enclose the shock. Now this whole build at Theobie Racing is an incredibly Eurocentric build. Starting off with the mainstay of French racing, Sun. Nico Vulio dominated the mountain biking scene in the 90s and early noughties on that very brand and it's really coming under resurgence. So the really eye-catching part of this bike is the linkage itself. Everything is so well integrated and it looks so remarkably well finished. Everything has been kind of worked in conjunction with each other. Even these fenders here which are designed to keep any kind of rocks or debris out of the quite tight tolerance parts. It's actually running a French shock made by Fast Suspension. It's their new shock, the Phoenix. You could actually count the number of Fast Shock employees on my hand. It's such a small company and everything for them is about racing. The cool thing is the level of custom tuning they can offer to each rider. We're talking shim stacks, oil weights, everything is on offer. And of course, the normal settings of compression, rebound and spring rate. From afar, it's got a similar silhouette to the Canyon Shapeshifter system. But actually what you've got here is a fully integrated and enclosed bike with lots of parts and lots of protection. The shock's exposed out the back of the seat stay. So what they've done is they have this fender at the back to keep away the muck, and also it's enclosed at the top. And even the hardware is designed to look as clean and as well kept as possible. Theo is running a full complement of FSA in the cockpit. So that's an FSA grid bar and stem. The bars are cut to about 740 and the stems are 35 mil. So the grips come from the small Swedish manufacturer called Herman. I've never seen them before, but they feel really good. They're not huge in diameter, but they're not ultra skinny either, sitting around that middle ground. Also fitted is FSA's seat post and Floatron paddle shifter. Now this has actually got a real nice touch by um, Theo's mechanic. And it's basically a little bolt that the mechanic has fitted. and similar to how you'd use on a B tensioner on a derailleur, really just to fine tune the exact demands of racers to give a nice, very positive feel. And when things go not quite as planned, Theo does store a one-up in his steerer tube as well to hopefully get him out of a spot of bother. Often you'll see with French enduro racers, they're running their brakes absolutely sky high. It seems to be really popular, I'm not entirely sure how they do it, but Theo seems to be bucking that trend and has his Formula Cura brakes in a relatively neutral position, which for me at least feel really comfortable. And he runs them with 200 mil rotors front and back for the ultimate in stopping power. So Theo is running a set of Formula Selva forks, which feel hard and fast, but Talking to, talking to him, he's only actually running about 60 PSI, so they must be doing something slightly different to what you're used to with, say, a Fox or a Rock Shocks. So the amazing thing about these forks is just by a, a torque ski, you can change your whole compression tune by undoing the bolt there and pulling the whole assembly out. I can't really think of any other manufacturers doing that, and it certainly fits in with the ultimate tunability you get with the fast suspension on the back as well. That Formula Selby fork is 160 mil of travel, and it's complemented by 150 mil of travel delivered in the rear by a tried and tested four bar suspension system and like that fast suspension shock. And it looks just so integrated, like every single component has been designed with something else in mind. Theo is running an FSA Floatron seat post, which has 150 mil of travel. And that's paired up to a DDK saddle. Tucked up under this DDK saddle is an ultra minimalist z file bag, which feels like it's got a CO2 canister and not much else in there. Theo actually runs a tape inner tubed on his frame for races but just for training and hooning about, he doesn't bother. This bike comes with FSA afterburner wheels, 
and he's running Hutchison tyres, which are actually a prototype, so we've got to be pretty tight-lipped on the details. Another French brand, Slicey Components, is also running inserts front and back. Sun have the freedom to run whichever drivetrain they choose, and they've gone for the SRAM EXO Eagle. That 10 to 50 tooth cassette at the back is paired to a 34 tooth chainring on the front. And these carbon FSA cranks are 175 mil in length. You can also see just how tight tolerance these frames are made to with this FSA chain guard, which I actually thought was direct mount onto the frame, but it's actually coming off standard ISCG tabs at the bottom. Theo runs Look Enrage pedals, which is a ground up design, but actually incorporates Shimano SPD system. So that was Theo Galli's Sun Kern 29er, a bike that is 99.999% ready for production. Now, if you want to have a more in-depth view of Lux pedals, click down here. And if you want to see how to keep your wheels running race ready, click down here.